The Virgin Atlantic Group, one of the earliest companies to actually express interest in Boom Supersonics Overture, has scrapped its prospective order for the aircraft type. A report by The Telegraph indicates that a commitment was actually never firm with Boom Supersonic, and such a deal, while first announced many, many years ago, has seen no movement for some time and has now very simply lapsed. Agreements for Boom Supersonic to provide their overture to other airlines are in place. However, question marks have continued to persist over the ins and outs of these remaining contracts that would, say, enable airlines to walk away from the project pretty freely. Obviously, while namely and most recently, we've seen the likes of United Airlines and even American Airlines announce publicly their commitment to fly overture, there are likely very easy exits from these contracts if if even binding to begin with. This information won't be publicly disclosed, but there is no way such a company would invest so much money into unproven technology and into a company that's never produced an aircraft in its life. Overall, it adds less legitimacy to these commitments, and I think another perfect example is the recent burst of interest and orders from some major airlines for electric aircraft. Will they fly these planes? Possibly, and you could probably argue they're more likely to than, say, Boom Supersonic's Overture, but it's the principle of being on the front foot and having these initiatives in place to fly the next generation of aircraft, or at least commit to do so. Whether that actually happens remains to be seen. Boom Supersonic initially said that the Virgin Group had committed alongside Japan Airlines to 30 jets, essentially being agreed to at the time as a pre-order, and as mentioned, the Virgin Group were one of the first customers. However, unlike commitments from American Airlines and United that have been, yes, the more recent talk, Virgin really lacked consistency from the offing. Their prominent place as a partner wasn't present and hasn't been like that for some time. The company attempting to return supersonic travel to the industry says that recent announcements should help quieten those that doubt the project and add more firm backing. However, the company still has many roadblocks that are continuously being ignored and status updates that, for most, seem very much flawed. In fact, in the past year, there have been more strategic partnership announcements and also paired with design changes. Remember, the whole aircraft changed than actual official developments. For example, their demonstrator is still yet to fly, yet each year we're told it will fly for that respective calendar year. It just doesn't. And the goalposts keep getting separated further. The partnerships, though, are not just strategic for the company, but also strategically announced when they also announce minor adjustments to their timeline and the ever-creeping problems get put to the side because of all these new companies joining the Boom Supersonic network. Boom says their first overture is still scheduled to fly in 2029 with customers. But will the airlines that have supposed contracts with the company stick around that long? Or are their contracts merely a means to generate great publicity and a mechanism to show shareholders that the respective airlines committed to this plane are looking ahead at the next generation of aircraft and innovation rather than behind? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, as well as those thoughts on the Virgin Group cancelling those plans to fly the Overture one day. Thanks a lot for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.